Erev Tov, good evening, everyone. We are in Zerah Shimshon on Parshas Korach, and we're going to take a look at a Pasuk. Oh, in the Zerah Shimshon, we're in Os Dalid, section four. Uh, the Daf in the Zerah Shimshon Sefer is Kup Tzadi uh, But we're, before we start, we're going to take a look at one Pasuk in, uh, in our Parsha, close to the beginning, and it is Perak Tes Zion Pasuk He. Uh, what has just happened before this Pasuk is that Korach and his followers uh, the Torah calls them Korach ve'adoso. Korach and his congregation um, have uh, come and uh, spoken very harshly to and aggressively to Moshe and to Aaron and said, uh, why are you, why, why uh, are you in such leadership positions? All of us are Kedoshim, all of us are holy, and all of us should have uh, important holy positions and you shouldn't rule over us. So Moshe First thing that Moshe does is the Torah says he falls to the ground, he falls to his face, and then Pasuk Hay says as follows, Vayedaber el Korach ve'el kol adoso, lay more. Moshe spoke to Korach and to all of his uh, congregation saying, Boker v'yoda Hashem es asher lo, in the morning Hashem will make known who is to him, ve'es ha-kadosh v'hikri love, and who is the holy one to him, who will be able to bring an offering to him? And the one who Hashem chooses will be able to bring an offering to him, to Hashem. And of course, this leads, this Pasuk right, is followed by uh, Moshe telling Korach, you and your followers should come tomorrow morning, and each of you should uh, bring uh, a, a fire pan and, and uh, incense. And, uh, and everyone will, uh, and, and Aaron will be there as well, and we'll see who Hashem chooses. And of course, we know the outcome of that contest. So now let's take a look at the Zerah Shimshon. Again, Oskala. Medrash. It says in the Medrash, this is the Medrash Tanchuma that the Zerah Shimshon is bringing down. Boker v'yoda Hashem es asher lo. Moshe said, as we just saw in the Torah, in the morning Hashem will make known who is to him. Amar lo Moshe, Moshe said to Korach, Givulos chilek HaKadosh Baruch Hu Be'olamo, God distributed borders in his world. God set limits and borders in his world. Shema yecholim atem la'arev yom v'layla. Is it, perhaps do you think you might be able to mix the day and the night? Adkan l'shono, until here is the language of the Medrash Tanchuma. So, What's happening here is that the question that the Medrash is dealing with is, why did Moshe say Boker? In the morning, Hashem will make known who belongs to him. Why, why did they have to wait until the next morning? So the Medrash Tanhuma says, Moshe was making a point about the existence of day and night. And he was saying to Korach, the same way that when Hashem created the world, he created a phenomenon called uh, uh, Lila, and he created a uh, and, and he created a phenomenon called Yom, uh, and and they're separate, and they can't be combined. The same way you Korach and your followers uh, cannot possibly combine the day and the night, so too, uh, so too, uh, God made borders and decisions as to who would have which positions amongst the the Jewish people, which positions of leadership, and which positions of uh, representing the people in terms of korbanos and sacrifices. And Korach, you can't change that either. One, just as one, the creation of the world and how it was done was Hashem's will and the, and the decisions that Hashem made, that was God's will. So too, in Klal Yisrael, amongst the Jewish people, the decisions that Hashem made in terms of leadership and, and, uh, uh, are also Hashem's will. And Korach, you, you, you shouldn't, why are you arguing against that? Are you, are you, you know, why are you trying to change uh, decisions and, and limitations that Hashem made. So the Zer Shimshon comments on this piece in the Medrash Tanchuma. Koshe, this is difficult, and he's going to ask three questions. De lefize, ba'oso shoa shahaya yom. According to this idea that uh, Moshe wanted to bring in this idea of night and day, at that moment when Moshe was talking to them, it, to Korach and his followers, it was daytime. The Moshe Kos of Rashi, as Rashi uh, wrote, Ato Eishichrus Hu Lanu. This is a time of possible drunkenness. This was a time when they had eaten a big meal 
and there had been uh, eating and, and, and drinking and possibly drinking to excess. And what, what Zer Shimshon, this uh, Rashi is referring to that the Zer Shimshon is uh, bringing here is that Moshe was thinking perhaps they drank too much. Perhaps Korach and his followers got a little tipsy. They drank too much and uh, with, their, with their meal during the day, with their big uh, lunch. And therefore, that's why they're making this crazy claim. They're upset. And, uh, and so, uh, and so um, uh, that shows us that it, it took place during the day, uh, Rashi says. So the Zerah Shimshon says if it was taking place during the day, if Moshe was talking to Korach and his followers during the day, then he could have said, let's wait till this evening. Let's wait till tonight, and then Hashem will show who is the one that he chooses and who is holy to him to bring a special sacrifice to him. Why did Moshe say, let's wait until the next day in the Boker in the morning? Why did Moshe just say, it's daytime now? Let's wait until tonight. Because we still could have uh, learned the lesson from this. Moshe still could have said to Korach and his followers, tonight, when it's nighttime, show me how you're going to bring out the sun. Instead of the moon coming out and, and having a nighttime, show me how you're going to bring out the sun tonight. In other words, Moshe could have used the same language and taught the same lesson to them about day and night and the separation the, the unchangeable separation between day and night, Moshe could have uh, made that same point and referred to tonight, to Erev, as opposed to Boker, the next morning. Va'amai noka dafka Boker. So why did Moshe specifically refer to the next morning, saying God will show tomorrow morning who he chooses? That's question number one. The ode and another question, ma inyan zela zeh. What's the connection between Korach and his claims and his uh, attack against Moshe and Aaron and the day and the night and, and how are those things connected? This idea of Moshe saying, Korach, do you think you can mix the day and the night? What does that have to do with Moshe and Aaron? Did it ever occur? Did Moshe think it actually occurred to Korach and his followers that, there's, that they had some control over the night and the day, that they could actually mix the elements of the night and the day. So why is Moshe saying to them, Korach, you and your followers know that you can't, that the day and night are separate. Yes, everyone in the world knows the day and night are separate. And yes, everyone in the world knows you can't possibly uh, change that. So why is Moshe making that specific point to uh, Korach? The imishum shehayu shikurim mamish, and if you want to say, that Moshe thought, wow, maybe they're really completely intoxicated, or possibly Moshe thought, I'm not sure, seems to me they, yeah, there's a suffix, they, they really could be completely drunk out of their minds. You say, that's why Moshe wanted to wait until the morning, meaning perhaps Moshe said, let's wait till tomorrow morning so they could sleep it off, go home, go to sleep, and then in the morning, you'll be more clear-headed and, and you'll realize that this was all nonsense. This is foolishness. Maybe that's why. If you think maybe that's why Moshe said, wait till the next morning. How would Moshe's warning to them be effective? And, and how could any words that Moshe would speak to them uh, be effective? If they weren't in their right minds, if they were drunk, if they were intoxicated and inebriated, then, then why is Moshe saying to them, and, 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 you know, Rav uh, Lachem, it's too much what you're doing, and, and, this is, and, and there's going to be a sacrifice tomorrow morning. And he came right out and said, God will show that there's only one person who's going to be successful in sacrificing to them, which of course was hinting to them, you know what, it's going to be our own and the rest of you are going to be killed. So, but that's not going to be effective to people who are drunk and stumbling around um, in the way that possibly Moshe thought they were. So therefore, the Zerah Shimshon uh, opens with these three questions. And as we go through the ideas that he develops, the theme that he develops, we'll come back, God willing, towards the end to show how these questions are answered. Let's now continue in the second paragraph. The Isa B'Medrash, it is stated in the Medrash, and now the Zerah Shimshon is bringing from the Medrash Rabbah, before we saw 
a little uh, segment of the Medrash Tanhuma. Now we're talking of the Medrash Rabbah, and this is in Bereshis. The Pasuk, on the Pasuk in Bereshis, of course, uh, in the beginning of Bereshis, talking about the creation of the world, it says, Ve'ez ha'kochavim, and the stars. So it says Hashem uh, made the two great uh, luminaries, and the, the, the Ma'or Hagadol, the, the larger luminary was for the day, and the, and the smaller luminary was for the night. And then Ve'ez ha'kochavim, the Pasuk says, and also the stars, the stars also came out at night with the smaller luminary. Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so the Medrash Rabbah brings that Hashem said, Ho'il v'levona zo miyata asma liyo sholetes palayla, since the moon humbled itself, so to speak, made itself small and accepted its role of ruling at night as opposed to during the day, gozer ani aleha, I'm going to make a, de- de- a decree about the moon, the levona, at the time that it goes out at night, in other words, at the time that we see it at night, it appears and we can see the moon at night, that the star should also become visible at night. And when the moon uh, is no longer visible during the daylight hours, so the stars are also not visible. So according to the Medrash Rabbah, Hashem, um, a, a specifically made a decision that the stars should come out at the same time as the moon was out to honor the moon's decision to humble itself and to accept the lower role of being the Ma'or, the luminary of the night, as opposed to the great sun, the great luminary of the daytime, the Ma'or Hagado. And because the moon made that, uh, accepted that role, it was rewarded, so to speak, with an accompaniment of Kochavim, of stars. And the Medrash Rabbah now continues. Udikavosa, and similar to this idea, we see Vishem Achiv Yoktan, Vahuli, the name of the brother of Peleg. These are the two sons of Aver. This is a Pusik from Parshas Noach, which we'll explain in a moment. Um, the Torah tells us this, the uh, younger son's name was Yoktan, with the connection to the word Katan, Vahuli, etc. Adkan Lishono. So let's just uh, talk about that reference before the Zerah Shimshon uh, continues his comments on this piece in the Medrash Rabbah. Um, we just saw how the Medrash Rabbah uh, talks about the moon and Hashem rewarding the moon, so to speak, with the accompaniment of stars because the moon took the lesser role. And in, uh, in Parshas Noah, when the genealogy, when the lineage of uh, Noah and his three sons is listed, so we, from shame, we start hearing about the children and the grandchildren of shame. The great-grandchild of shame was named Aver, and he had two sons, as I mentioned a moment ago. The oldest one was called Peleg, and the next one was called Yoktan. And Yoktan, the Torah lists there, had a, a 13 sons. He had 13, he, he had a huge family, uh, including 13 sons. So uh, the Midrashim and Chazal bring down, why did Yoktan get the special schus, and we'll see it in a moment, to have, uh, to have so many children? Because of the word katan, because he humbled himself, he was meek, he was a humble person, and so he was rewarded. That's what the Medrash uh, Rabbah is talking about there with its reference to Yoktan. And now let's continue. Demashma, this Medrash Rabbah implies, Shabuschus, Shahalavona Miyata Atzma, in the merit of the moon lowering itself, yeshla uchlusa shel kochavim lechavoda, it received an accompaniment, an entourage of stars to honor it. V'lochein hashemesh, but not the sun. Afal pishu gadol mimena, even though the sun is greater. The sun is the greater of the two luminaries, but it was the moon that received the greater honor of being um, accompanied by the kochavim, the stars. Vechein yaktan, and so too it was with yaktan, afal pisha even though he was the younger son of Ever, zocha lehamid mishpachos gedolos, he merited to uh, bring into this world and to establish a huge uh, family, uh, 13 uh, sons and all of their children, and, and so he merited that was to bring all of these uh, children and then their children. It, it was as if he had his own tribe in this world. 
Bishvil Shemit et Es Atzmo, because he also made himself small as his name indicated. He was, he was humble and he was uh, meek and he was cut on. He didn't claim any honor for himself. And so we see that that idea applied both to the moon and to Yachton, and that's the idea comes from the piece in the Medrash Rav. The Iker Machlok is Korach in the main point of contention from Korach himself. How you saw it was, Mibnation is Kane al Nisi Uso Shel Elitzopon Ben Uziah. It's because he was jealous that a cousin of his was appointed to be the Nasi, to be the leader over uh, the Kahas branch of the Levi family. Shen is Mone Nasi because uh, Eli Tzofen was appointed to this position of leadership, and he, Eli Tzofen, was younger than Korach. And, and Korach was jealous about that. Why, would, why did Moshe Rabbeinu come along and appoint a younger cousin uh, to the position when Korach should have been appointed to the position in Korach's mind? Lakach <clears> Amr <throat> Moshe, Therefore, Moshe said to Korach, Lidvarecha, according to your words and your thinking, Korach, that you should have been appointed the, uh, the Nasi over the Korach, the whole Korach family. Shahagedulos holchos achar hagodol, because you believe that great honors should go to the one who's the oldest. Imkein hayelohem lekoichovim. Let's say, see, Mashemesh, if you were right, then the star should come out during the day and accompany the sun because it's the, it's the greater, it's the Godol, it's the larger luminary. The Im Hakochavim Sheyetu Belaylim Hayoreach. And tonight, when the stars come out with the moon, if you are able, Korach, to arrange that the stars that come out tonight with the moon, will come out again in the morning. That's the key of Boker, of waiting till the next morning. If you, Korach, are able to bring out those stars and have them appear with the sun uh, the next morning, mitam shachama yoser gedola v'ru'uyim la, based on your reasoning that the sun is greater and it's more appropriate that the sun should receive the entourage of stars, afizos tu chalavatel. If you can do that, then you can also nullify this decree uh, about uh, this decision, Moshe says, uh, about me appointing Eli Tzofon ben Uziah, which of course also came, uh, also that decision came from Hashem and Moshe just communicated it, then you can, then you can uh, nullify that decision. So if you, Korah, tomorrow morning can show us in front of all your followers, you can show how you're going to make the stars appear with the sun as opposed to with the moon uh, at, at night or in addition to with the moon at night, then, 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 if you can change nature in that sense, then, uh, then, you, then you can also be mevatel the, the uh, position, the decision to appoint Eli Tzofon ben uh, Uziel. Avalim hakochavim lo yetu bayom, but if in the morning the stars don't come out and appear with the sun, imkain hagedola holeches achar mishem maktin atzmo. If so, that proves the point that Moshe was making that, that, honors, that honors should go to those who humble themselves, not to those who want to claim honors and claim uh, greatness. And Moshe said, Eli Tzofan has humbled himself. He hasn't sought out honor. He hasn't sought it. He did not seek out this position. And you, Korach, Adarabah, just the opposite, Rodev Achar Hagadolos. You are chasing after honors. You're chasing after uh, awards and recognition. The lachain, and therefore le elitzafu neos hagedola velo lecha, and therefore it's appropriate for elitzafun to receive the honor of this position because of his humility, and not to you Korach because of your grasping and desirous and being desirous of of more honor and more cover. So let's pause here for a moment. Um, um, one of our original questions was. What was the connection between day and night? And let's wait till the morning. Um, and, and, and if Moshe was waiting, and the third question then in addition to that was, and if Moshe was waiting till the morning because he thought they were really drunk, then why was he talking to them at all at that point and trying to explain things to them and reason with them? And so the Zerah Shimshon has showed us that no, Moshe really didn't have a concern that they were so drunk 
that they couldn't understand what he was saying. That's not why he told them to wait until the next morning. The reason he told them to wait until the next morning is because he wanted to make a graphic, a visual a point to Korach and his followers to say to them, you are trying to change God's will. And doing that is like trying to change the Teva, like trying to change the nature that God set up the world and created the world. So if that's what you're trying to do, if you want to change God's decisions about our own being appointed to Kohen Gadol and about, uh, and about Eli Tzofen ben Ozeel's appointment as the Nasi over the, of the family of, Kor, of, uh, of Kahas, if that's what you want to uh, try and uh, accomplish, then fine, show us how you have control over nature and Hashem's decisions in creating the world. Shouldn't be with the moon, but Boker in the morning, they're going to come out with the sun as well. That was the the uh, real dialogue, the hidden dialogue that was really going on between Moshe and Korach. And that's what Moshe was really referring to when he said, Boker, we have to wait till the morning to really see um, to really see who's going to come out victorious here, meaning, of course, that Korach, the same way he couldn't change nature, he also had no right to try and change the decisions uh, that Hashem made about the leadership of the people. Coming to the last paragraph. V'zehu she'amru b'gemara, and this is what it says in the Gemara Masecha Sanhedrin. She'olu shemesh v'yareach l'zvul. It, uh, the, um, the Gemara says that the sun and the moon went up to one of the heavenly realms. Zvul is the name of one of the uh, heavenly uh, realms or spheres. The Amru le HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and they said to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Im ata osed din leven Amram, if you, in this machlokis between Korach and Moshe, if you do justice and you support Moshe and you make it clear that Ben Amram, that's a, that's a Kinoi, that's a, a nickname for Moshe. His father's name was Amram. If you clearly show that his decisions have come from you and that he has faithfully followed your decisions and he, uh, and he wins this battle, Nate say, then we, the, the sun and the moon said, then we'll come out of hiding, so to speak, uh, and, we'll, and we'll do our functions in the world. The imlav, but if not, if somehow you don't completely vindicate Moshe Rabbeinu clearly, Moshe and Aaron, lo neitze. We're not going to come out. We're going to stay hidden in Zavul, in this heavenly sphere, and we're not going to come out to fulfill our function. Mipnei shelefi divrei korach. So Nazir Shimshon explains what's going on in that Gemara. That's a very unusual uh, uh, Gemara. So the Zer Shemshon explains, Mibnei shelefi divrei korach, hayilo l'shemesh litol hakochavim lechelko, shuhu yoser gogo. As we said before, according to the reasoning of korach, it is the sun that should have the stars accompanying uh, it, because it's the greater luminary. V'im ein lo kochavim, and if the sun does not have stars, muchach, this proves, shahadin im Moshe, that the correct viewpoint here is not korach's viewpoint, but Moshe's viewpoint, that it is actually the opposite of what Korach thinks. It is the humble, the meek, like Moshe Rabbeinu, like Aharon HaKohen, like Eli Tzofan ben Uziel, who deserve honor and, and deserve recognition and important uh, positions. V'chein halavana, and so to the moon, miyato atzma, it uh, humbled itself, mishum she'yefshar l'shnei malachim, she'yishtamshu b'keser echad. The moon understood and accepted the fact that you couldn't have two equal rulers. One had to be the chief, uh, the chief executive, uh, the, the, the major uh, ruler, and the other had to take a lower position, a president and a vice president, not two co-presidents. And, and the moon understood that. And so the moon said, okay, the sun will rule during the day, and I will, will be the, the lesser luminary, the smaller luminary that, uh, that uh, rules over the night, and the moon accepted that. V'kan hayu mosayim v'chamishim ish. And here with Korach, we had 250 people. Mivakshim kahuna gedola. All saying that they should be appointed, not, 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 just, uh, not just to become Kohen, but they should be appointed to kahuna, to the position of Kohen Gadol. To Moshe Pirish Rashi, as Rashi explains uh, what their real claim was. According to their words, these 250 people, along with Korach, who said they should all become Kohanim uh, Gedolim, Yecholim Liyoshnei Malachim Shavim. According to them, there can be two rulers and many more, 250 
uh, kings all equal. The halavana nisma'ata bichidi. And that would mean that the moon had accepted a lower role for no reason, for foolish thinking. So therefore, if Korach uh, turned out to be in any way, his reasoning turned out to be in any way substantiated, that would be a tremendous insult to the sun and to the moon. And it would have been humiliating for them to come out. Now that the Svara of Korach has been promulgated to the world. So Zerah Shemshon is explaining what's happening in that Gemara is that once Korach made his case and the whole world, so to speak, the whole Jewish world, certainly all of Christ was waiting to see what's going to happen here. Uh, the sun and the moon said, we, we have everything riding on this decision because everything that's happened to us, the sun not having the stars and the moon being only ruling at night and not ruling during the day and being the lesser luminary, everything that's happened to us, the sun and the moon said, is because of this principle uh, which Korach is arguing with, which Korach is contesting and Korach is claiming that honors only go to the, to the great ones and that many, many people can share the greatest level. It doesn't just have to be uh, one person who's in the ultimate leadership position. And that's why the moon and the, and the, uh, the star and the moon uh, ascended to Zvul, according to the Gemara and Sanhedrin, and said they, they could only come out if Moshe ben Amram was completely uh, vindicated here. So now we can take a step back and, and look at the whole piece uh, in, the Zera, er, in the Zera Shimshon. Uh, he's answered his, all of his questions by developing this idea that, is, it, that what was the real argument between Moshe and Korach was, who deserves to be honored? Who deserves recognition? Korach's claim was it is, it is the person who um, is clearly the greater or the oldest or, or um, you know, can show that they're the best, so to speak. It's that person that deserves honor. And Moshe's answer was, no, it's the humble, it's the meek, it's the person running away person running away from honor, the person running away from recognition and esteem that actually deserves it the most because humility is a quality and a trait that is so precious precious and cherished by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And so we see that's the connection to the, uh, to the moon and the sun and the day and the night that Moshe was, was pointing to when he said, Boker, tomorrow morning, we can't take care of this matter right now, Moshe said. We can't even take care of it tonight. We need to wait till tomorrow morning when the sun comes out, and then we'll all be able to see if Korach and his followers can bring out stars. And if so, then I must be wrong, and my reasoning must be wrong, and all the appointments that have come through me must be incorrect. But if in the morning the sun comes out and there are no stars, then that uh, shows that these are decisions of Hashem that can't be changed, and Korach and his followers uh, are completely in the wrong, and and uh, and all the decisions uh, of Moshe and uh, Aaron's appointment, Eli Sofen's appointments, and so many other decisions will be completely vindicated and justified by Hashem. Yashukov to everyone for participating, and God willing, we look forward to getting together again to take a look at the Zer Shimshon on next week's Parsha.